one thing he said is, you know, those pro bars just absolutely saved me. And it was really interesting because at those altitudes, when you're above 20,000 feet, your body just will not digest anything. But for whatever reason, primarily because it's all real food ingredients, my body would digest all of that. It was like the only way I could get nutrition and get energy from my body. I said, well, that's amazing. He goes, you know, in all fairness, a couple of the nuts didn't digest and they came out. Like, that's probably more information than I need, but I'm really glad, glad to hear it. That was Jeff Coleman with a snippet from one of the doctors who survived a major, major fatality on Mount Everest. This story plus your health today on the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how's it going today? Thanks for stopping by the Fly Fishing Show. If you're brand new to this podcast or have been listening to the show for a while, you can click uh, subscribe right now and get uh, and you'll get updated when that next episode arrives in your inbox. Uh, that's the best way to stay in touch uh, with this podcast. Before we get started, let's hear from our sponsor. Togan's Fly Shop, providing superior products at an affordable price. An amazing resource for fly tying materials, tools, and fishing accessories. Since 2005, Togan's has been over delivering on price, service, and passion. And now it's time to discover the Togan's buzz for yourself. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash Togan's to get started today. You support this podcast by clicking over to take a look at Togan's online. That's wetflyswing.com slash Togans, T-O-G-E-N-S. Togans. Jeff Coleman, founder of Pro Bar, is here to share the story of creating one of the best energy bars on the planet. Jeff describes how it all started with a chance meeting with uh, a vegan chef, why you can actually eat these bars as a full-on meal, and an easy and tasty way to give yourself a boost while outdoors. Uh, for me, after a good cup of coffee and IPA, the energy bar is pretty much my next favorite thing. So, uh, so let's jump into this. Without further ado, here is Jeff Coleman from theprobar.com. How's it going, Jeff? Good morning. It's going well. Good, good. Thanks for coming on here. We, uh, we occasionally do some uh, episodes that are not quite fully online of, you know, the fly fishing space and they're more outdoor related. And for me, it's things that I really love and I've been using uh, and, and uh, eating Pro Bar and your products for a while. We're going to dig into that. I, I want to hear, uh, you know, you're a co-founder of Pro Bar and I want to dig into that story. Can you just take us back to um, maybe take us back to before Pro Bar started and tell us how that how that idea came to be? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's kind of an interesting Interesting story. I, um, I grew up in New Jersey and uh, was really an East Coast guy. And I ended up moving out to Park City. I'd gone to school in the West out in California and uh, had spent pretty much all my work career as a real estate developer and working with a family business. And then I moved out to Park City, Utah to begin uh, doing some projects here. And when I came west, I I really just fell in love with the outdoors and the accessibility was great, especially in Park City where the trails are out the door and I uh, started to do a lot of trail running out here and really loved it. And one thing that I, I kind of came across my radar screen was, you know, kind of, I should think about my nutrition a little bit because I was running around grabbing fast food, um, big Philadelphia cheesesteaks, um, the typical, uh, typical Jersey diet. Um, and at that time, it wasn't in fad or in style to talk about what you're eating, you know, other than to, to, to talk about, you know, your big cheesesteaks and, and all that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I was fit, but I wasn't really giving myself any help when it came to food. So I was talking to someone in town. They said, well, you should speak to the food coach. Now, at that time, Park City was a town of 2,500 people. And so I was pretty amazed that there was a food coach. I said, that sounds pretty serendipitous. I think I'll, I'll give him a call. And I gave uh, Art Eggerson a call, and he came over and food coached me. And he was a vegan chef, and he was an excellent chef. And he said, look, I'm going to work with you for a couple weeks. I'm going to make you meals. You can tell me if you like them or if you don't. Everything is plant-based. He talked to me about the benefits of of a plant-based diet. 
And I said, okay, look, I'll be really open-minded. I will tell you, I mean, I love, you know, the kind of food that I eat, and I'm not going to tell you something tastes great if it doesn't, uh, kind of in my Jersey accent at the time. So he started, so he started doing some, some cooking for me, and the meals were, were great, and they were all, they were all vegan meals. And uh, I was really starting to get on board with, okay, could I do this? Could I make this sustainable? And uh, he came in one day and said, Jeff, um, I know you, uh, you know, you really liked your cheesesteaks. So I made you, uh, you know, I made you, uh, you know, a meal with, with the same flavor and everything that you would love. And here's, here's some cheesesteaks. I said, all right, one thing I want to say, I love what you're doing. I've been loving your meals. You don't have to start giving me that kind of food again. I mean, I'm ready to make the transition. He goes, just, just try it. And I said, this is fantastic art. I mean, it's just amazing. And, uh, <laughs> and he looks at me and he has a little sneer and he goes, I said, but I really feel badly. I mean, I didn't want you to start, you know, making stuff with meat for me and cheese. I mean, I feel a little embarrassed. I mean, I'm really trying to make the transition here. And Art looks at me and goes, with this little sneer, I can still see it in my mind's eye. And he said, there's no meat in there. <laughs> so he, he really showed that you could really handle flavor uh, with the plant-based diet. And that's at that moment, I'm like, okay, I think I can do this. But we, we, we uh, parted ways and I really made a commitment to changing my diet. <clears throat> and a few days later, I went over to the health food store in town, Fairweather, and picked up a few things. I noticed this big tinfoil package sitting on the countertop. And I said, what's this? And they said, oh, it's a, it's a pro bar. But it was, I mean, the thing was like six inches high by four inches across and mostly empty, except it felt like there was something inside it. And they said, it's a bar, an, an energy bar. And I said, huh, okay. And, I, and they said, it's made by a guy locally, this guy, Art. I said, Art, the food coach? And they said, yeah. And I'm thinking, boy, that's, that's the crappiest marketing I've ever heard. He never even mentioned it. <laughs> so I tried the bar. It was fantastic. And it was all real food. And um, it was just, it was a blended bar. It wasn't baked. So all the nutrition was in. Everything he had taught me was in, the, was in that bar. And uh, I asked them, do you sell a lot of these? And they said, no, we get like three a week. And then they run out. And then a month later, we might get a couple more. But as it would be, Park City was very small. I went to the gym that afternoon and I ran into Art. And I said, Art, um, thanks for the food coaching. I'm definitely changing my lifestyle. This is going to be great for me. But I got to say, you know, I saw one of your bars at the store and you never mentioned. He goes, oh, yeah. And I said, that is the crappiest marketing I've ever heard of. <laughs> you had a captive audience for two weeks and you never even mentioned. He goes, oh, um, oh yeah, you're right. I guess I should have. So I said, boy, uh, that's, that's just crazy. Why don't you, uh, you know, let me know if you need any help because I think the thing's fantastic. And when I'm busy and I can't make a meal or whatever, I still want to eat just as well. And that bar fully meets that need. So let me know if I can help you in any way. Um, I know that you probably need some help in marketing and I'm definitely not a marketing expert, but when you didn't even mention that, I, I didn't think that was a very good marketing plan. And so he kind of laughed about it. Well, about a week later, he called me and said, you know, this thing's going nowhere. I mean, I've, I make a few bars. The guy that I work with gives me no money to make bars. Um, would you chat with me a little bit? Well, fast forwarding a little bit, um, I met with the person who uh, was kind of his investor, so to speak, although there wasn't much investment going in. And I, I bought it, his interest out. And then Art and I started a, a strategy to grow the business in that early, in those early days. And, um, and so we, we got rolling and, you know, one thing led to another, a lot of funny stories on the way, but, uh, we got, we always made sure that we made enough bars and very early on, I said to Art, Hey, why don't you go to Salt Lake, pick any 10 stores you want, and then come back and tell me how many of them want to buy the bars. And I said, we'll have them all ready to go. We'll have them all boxed up and made. And then when they say they want them, we will deliver immediately, which has been a tenet of the company from day one. We've always done a great job of being prepared and stocked and thinking ahead about what we're going to need. So he went to, he went to Salt Lake and calls me a week later and said, Hey, I went to 10 stores. and I just wanted to come recap with you. And it was like eight o'clock at night. I just got back from 
working at one of my job sites in the development business. And I said, yeah, come on over. I said, how did he go? He goes, it was great. I said, okay, well, how many of those stores would like to buy the wires? He said, um, 10. I said, you went to 10 stores and 10 wants them. And I'm doing math in my head thinking, oh my gosh, this is, that's incredible. I figured it'd be like two. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, great. Just give me the names of the stores and I'll make sure that um, my assistant in the office tomorrow gets, gets down there and delivers all of them and we'll be, and then we'll be off and running. And, you know, went to thinking, wow, this, I thought this would just be a fun little side project, but maybe it'll be more than that. So he said, uh, and I said, what does, uh, mean? Could you just write down the names of the stores? He said, well, I forgot to write them all down. So I can't remember the names of all the places I went. And I thought, oh no. So I went from thinking this is going to be incredible to this. <laughs> this is going nowhere. <laughs> that was very early, early stages, but he did finally remember them all. And we did deliver them all the next day. Um, and we just got such a great reception and you got to remember it at that time, 2003, uh, the big food companies had really pulled the wool over people's eyes. People are much more food conscious and food savvy and nutrition savvy now than they were 18 or 20 years ago. And so it was really a very, very different time, <clears throat> but the bar was for me fantastic because I need a lot of calories in my day. And I was finding myself running to a Burger King or McDonald's or whatever, just to grab something quickly because convenience was critical. But after having him cook great food for me, I realized that I really want great tasting food and I want it to be good for me. And I noticed the impact on my body, both the positive impacts of good food and the lack of the negative impacts from bad food. And so uh, it was all combined in that bar. And really since, I'm going to say really since 2003, I've probably averaged two or three bars a day or different pro bar products uh, for 18 years. <laughs> so I was, I was doing the math the other day. It's like thousands and thousands of pro bar products, <clears throat> but it's been a lifesaver. And you're still healthy. <laughs> so far, so good. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's worked out really well. And, you know, when I came out here, I really fell in love with trail running and, you know, a big part of any, any sport, um, whether you're fly fishing, trail running, and you're outside for long periods of time, the whole experience and uh, is 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 going to go up and down with the quality of the food that you put in your body. And you need nutrition, and you need good nutrition, and you want it to be sustainable. And that's a great story. So Art is your is the co-founder. It's you and Art. Yeah, he um, passed away some years ago. Um, and had left the business after a few years as well. He was, he was a fantastic, big hearted vegan chef. And at one point, um, just being involved in the business side really wasn't what he wanted to do any longer. So we kept, um, rolling forward, uh, at that point and just kind of outgrew his, his interests, I would say. What was your first, when you guys started, did you start with one bar? Or did you have a line of bars when you first started? Yeah, no, the, when we first started, Art had one bar, and I would say it was probably about a year and a half after we started that um, started to add some additional bars. So we started with the original bar. What was the, was that the, was there, because I know like the whole berry is one that I've eaten a lot of, but it was, was there one, that first one, the style? Yeah, the first one was the original, was, was the Pro Bar original meal bar. Oh, just called a pro bar. What was that? Just a basic kind of a, a, a fruit type bar. Yeah, it was just it was called the pro bar because it was the original original one with, you know, the, the same basic ingredients. Most of them have a lot of the same ingredients. And then we add things for different flavor. And then we added the whole berry, which you're familiar with. And we also did the peanut butter chocolate chip. And since I've, I've had a few uh, um, uh, different ones recently. So I, I want to talk a little bit about that because, yeah, I mean, I'm. That's my style. I'm always eating. I've always got a few bars in my, either in my backpack or my, you know, my vest or, you know, or trail running too. I used to do a lot of trail running. Uh, well, a lot more than I do now. And I love trail running. That's like one of my things too. So it's always good to have a little, you know, a little bar. I'm curious. So when you guys got going, say almost 20 years ago, who were the other bar companies? Cause I remember like, remember power bar. That was like the, like probably the worst tasting bar I had ever tasted. And at the time, right. Were they there or who else was out there? Yeah, so Power Bar was kind of one of, one of the reasons for their success. They were in the first ones to come up with the idea of a bar. And so they were the, the best-known bar. And then Cliff came in and started competing against them, 
uh, with a little bit better casing bar. Um, and, and so it was those two were that were kind of the big juggernauts at the time. And really there weren't that many, like now you go to the bar aisle and there's, you know, a hundred different bars. It's so confusing. Um, so it started with those two and then maybe there was one or two other small ones, but, uh, we came in at a good time, uh, to offer a product that was just far superior to what was out there. So that's it. Yeah. So basically there was power bar, a cliff bar and cliff bar. I've eaten, I've probably eaten hundreds and hundreds of cliff bars as well. And they're, you know, they have a good taste. I'm curious on the bar itself, because I mean, your, your bars, you know, obviously they cost, um, if anybody knows a little bit more than say a cliff bar. Um, I mean, do you know, I mean, ingredients wise, is there, is, are they totally different? Are they similarities? Or, you know, if you look at the two, I think the biggest similarity is they're both called a bar. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, it. But honestly, you know, you find people who are they, they will eat other products, but they love pro bars. And we have, um, as you may know, besides the meal bar, we also have protein bar. We have uh, a great energy chew. We have a smaller bar called Bite, and we try and create a solution. We try and create food solutions um, for people and. So our meal bar really is, gives you the calories if you miss a meal or um, you just need, you know, need the equivalent of those, that amount of calories for whatever you're doing. Um, we make them nutri- uh, very light, nutritionally dense. So, for example, when you're, when you're out there fly fishing, if you have a meal bar, it'll last you for a couple hours, two, three hours. Um, and your body will, you know, process it well and you'll get a lot of energy from, from the bar. I would say many of the other bars are really just kind of placeholders in your system and don't deliver the same kind of quality. Um, many of the companies, like whether it was Power Bar um, and some of the others, you'll find a lot of very highly processed ingredients or maybe, maybe even pow- uh, powders. But if you've eaten the meal bar or some of the Pro Bar products, especially the, the meal product, you can see the real seeds and the nuts and everything that's in there because it's very minimally processed. The other thing that's a big difference in terms of delivering uh, nutrition is all of our bars are blended, but we don't bake any of our products. So if you think about the nutritional quality of anything, uh, almost everybody else's bars are baked. And when you do that, you take up to 50 or more percent of the nutritional value out of the product. And that's something I think a lot of people don't uh, know about. It's all our stuff is gluten-free and always has been um, because we knew that was an issue. But as you know, now that's everybody talks about gluten-free and um, also non-GMO. So we're easy on the planet, easy on your body. And that's why, you know, when you look at your bars, as far as a price perspective, um, you know, it's a little bit higher price point just because of that it, it costs a little more to get those, the things you just talked about in there compared to some of the other ones that maybe is just a highly processed bar essentially like i mean probably not, i mean not much different than a candy bar i mean like what is the like a, like if you look at a snickers bar I mean, that's obviously a lot more sugar um but i mean do you think when you see all these hundreds of bars out there do you think a lot of them are just highly processed yeah i think well i think many of them are and there's some i think there're probably some other um decent bars but from the whole from a whole food perspective i would say we're still the premium bar the other thing to keep about keep in mind when you think about pricing is our meal bar is 380 to 400 calories and there no other bars are really that size so you're also paying for the extra food that you're getting right because a lot of them and if you take a cliff bar which is maybe 270 calories many bars are kind of in the 150 to 250 to 270 range. Uh, Even I think RX bar, uh, it's dense and because they have egg whites in there and maybe it's 300 calories, but but our bars are about 380 because they're made with a purpose to really replace a meal. Um, Now our bite bar is 150 calories and then that that one pricing wise will be more similar to what you're seeing with some of the others. That's a uh, a piece to to note there. Okay. And um... Well, I think, you know, I, I have a, a decent picture right away on, on, on the benefits, obviously, is it's a, uh, you know, you can get a, if you miss a meal, you can fill the gap and they taste great. That's the other thing. I mean, if, if somebody listening hasn't had these things before, I think you guys sell them. I mean, it seems like, you know, they're at some of the, it seems like they're, they're everywhere, but especially you see them at some of the natural stores. Did you guys, I mean, where are you distributing these things now? How, how do you decide where they go and stuff like that? Yeah, well, earlier on they were, they were 
very you know was pretty much in the natural stores. That's how we started with you know fair weather here in Park City, and then uh, some of the natural stores, and then eventually got into Whole Foods. So we really started and grew up in, in that industry. Um, as e-commerce and other parts of the world grew, we started to do that as well. And then we found that we we've done really well. When people know us, they love us. And so trying to get a little closer to people. So for example, if you look at places like college and universities, right, where the athletes, they know it and they love it. We'll get orders from pro sports teams uh, because the athletes and the trainers there know what the athletes need and they know that they need good nutrition. And so they're coming, coming to us. And so um, we've had places where uh, my wife's an anesthesiologist at the University of Utah. We had we have a good presence selling bars at the hospital, and people are like, "Well, huh? Well, why in the hospital?" And you think about a surgeon or an anesthesiologist that's in, that are in long operations; they have a real tough time <laughs> getting food, right? So they love the meal bars. They can eat a meal bar, and it'll sustain them for a really long time. Personally, as a you know a potential patient one of these days, I would love for them to be well fed while they're working on me. So, um, but it's been interesting. I had a lot of stories. They they actually put a bunch of them. Uh, they bought them and put them in the lounge for the doctors. But the doctors were going in and scooping them up so quickly, the hospital couldn't couldn't keep up. So they're like, okay, we're not just going to give them out. You got <laughs> they have to get them at the ca- they have to get them at the cafe now. So originally, uh, there was obviously people in the hospital for a number of different reasons, but the, uh, the physicians love them. And just really, I guess you could call, you know, many of them are really athletes, uh, both outside of work, but in work when you're doing operations that are multi hours working on someone's knee or a major surgery, uh, somewhere else, they're, they're athletes and they need great nutrition. And so they really appreciate and know what we do. So getting close to people who understand what the value of our product is, um, can come in many different forms, whether it's, um, like I said, through sports and outdoor places at the colleges, whether it's at a at a hospital. That's where we find that uh, the people who know us love us because they know what we do. And uh, and also um, hunters and fishermen, right? Uh, they're outside. Of, <clears throat> interestingly, you know, we're a, we're a vegan company, but a guy who's a friend and he's an elk hunter <laughs> came to me and said, you know, pro bars are a staple for all of us out there. Michael, like, well, I'm kind of trying to think about, about how that works. And he said, well, look, we're out there walking for hours and hours. And then we have to, you know, we go hunting. We have to get uh, carry back whatever we're hunting for. And we can't afford to, to carry enough food and, and use that weight. But pro bars are so additionally dense I can carry six or seven of those and I could be going all day long. I'm like, oh, makes sense. So there's a lot of occasions where um, pro bars serve a great um, purpose for them. The other part is, is uh, a lot of people have, have food issues and they're starting to realize that some of their health problems and their discomfort in their stomach um, and their lack of energy is coming from a poor diet. And in the fact that our, our products burn really clean because they're blended, not baked, it's easy for your body to process that. And it's all real food products just makes them good for everybody. You know, we even learned some interesting things about, uh, we make a little energy chew. Um, and it was interesting because someone a couple of years ago said to me, you know, uh, these things just, these bolt products really, and the, or the, and they said the same thing about bite, really saved my, my kid. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, you know, it was the end of the day and um, my kid went to soccer at four o'clock and then it was like five o'clock when the game started and the team was doing great for the first half. And then, and then all of a sudden they just fell apart. Like it was like the kids stopped trying. I said, well, what time was the game? It's like five o'clock. I said, what time was lunch in school? Five was at 12 o'clock. I said, oh, yeah, kids bonking. Your whole team was bonking. So people just completely forget. You need to, and that replies to kids and adults. You need to be well fed. And he said, but then I gave my kid a couple of those bolt, the energy chews. And like by the fourth quarter, it was like a different kid. <laughs> you know? So it's, it's really, uh, I think that the nutrition piece and, and with kids as well, a lot of times they, you know, it's, it's um, they just need 
we need fuel for our bodies at, at every stage of the game. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that bolt because I, I've been uh... – I just ate those for the first time and uh, actually um, gave a couple to my kids as well. Yeah, they're super tasty. Is it? Now, there's caffeine in them, right? Is there a little bit of caffeine in them? Well, they're in some. So there are some that, that are and some that aren't. It depends on the flavor. Our raspberry includes it. Our strawberry does not. Um, and we have, a, we have a couple of each. So for the kids, it's really not necessary to have the yerba mate in there, which is a little different than the you know, the caffeine you would have in, in coffee, it's a, it's a, it lifts you up gradually. Um, and it's not, you don't get this as jittery, but really not necessary to give that to kids. And again, those are for a specific occasion, uh, really sports oriented occasions, because if you're not, but because they're easy to process, they get right in your body quickly, but otherwise eat a meal bar and, or eat a bite bar or eat a protein bar, which, it's just that if you're running, it's harder to eat a protein bar, right? So you got the meal bar, the uh, the bite bar, the and the and the what was the other one? You got the kind of the main, uh, just the protein bar. Well, yeah, we have the protein, we have meal, which is the larger one, and then we have bite, which is a smaller uh, smaller bar, and then we also have some uh, nut butters as well. Oh, nut butters. What's so? What's the difference between the meal bar and the protein bar? Well, the meal bar is this basically the blend of fats, carbs, uh, and protein that you would need that you would in the right balance that you would need for a meal. And it's a bit bigger. So you have 380 calories. Um, and then the bite bar is 150 calorie bar, um, which will be a little less protein, um, but great quick energy. And is the protein bar, is that a different bar or that's just similar to the other ones? Uh, and the protein bar is 20 grams of plant-based protein. And, um, and those are, and they're a coated bar as well. They have nice, nice flavor. And it's, and a lot of the protein bars you eat are very tough to get through <laughs> and, uh, and don't, don't taste great. They're really delicious. Uh, the protein bars. Yeah, no, I haven't eaten any of your stuff that wasn't, was super tasty. That's, that's the other cool thing. So who, who I guess I had a couple of questions. Uh, you know, you talked about art originally. So now after art left, who did you, ha you found somebody else to do, uh, do the cooking or whatever? Uh, yeah, well, as a blender, we don't do too much cooking, but we do uh, we do some blending. <laughs> just teasing you, but just teasing you. But um, no, we've always he had that original one, and then ever since then, uh, we were all kind of involved. You know, it was just a couple of us. Then there were uh, a handful of us, but we would always make things ourselves. The other thing that's that's different about Probar than than most um, bar companies, especially ones that aren't the, the behemoths, is we make all our own products and always have. So we, we, we have our own uh, uh, certified factory. And ever since we started, we made our own bars. And we do our own R&D as well. So we're always trying new foods and creating different products um, so we can get them just right. And then we can shelf life test and make sure they're going to hold up well. Um, so we've always done all that ourselves. Take us to the factory really quick. Well, what does that look like? Is that, uh, I mean, who, who's in the factory? Who's working it? Do you, I'm not sure, like the size of the company and all that. Yeah, no, we're we're about 65 people, and uh, our manufacturing facility is down in Salt Lake. So we built ourselves a building um, some years ago. We had been in different places. Um, I mean, when we started at, in Park City, <laughs> we would take our dry ingredients in, in uh, buckets and then mix it up with some of the syrups. And then we would go over to a little restaurant and use their kitchen to, to uh, mix it up and then roll them in a pan. And then we would go down to Salt Lake and find a packager we could, <laughs> we could borrow from somebody uh, in the early days and try and get them out the door. So it was really uh, quite a process. But now we have uh, a, a state-of-the-art factory that we manufacture in Salt Lake, which um, our quality standards are the same certification that a General Mills or a Kellogg's would have it's uh, the highest certification that that uh, that you you would expect from from a mat food manufacturer. So we have you know a whole staff that works on that, and we've got a whole crew working on the production side. Um, we have, we check all the ingredients that come in and go out of the facility uh, for safety, and uh, and then we have an R and D lab as well where we where we create new products. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. 
Togan's Fly Shop, providing superior quality products at an affordable price, an amazing resource for fly tying materials, tools, and fly fishing accessories. Togan's has you covered when looking for unique in-house products, but also supports and supplies materials and tools from other leading fly brands you know and trust. Togan's is now offering their mystery fly tying box, where they simplify the process for you in choosing materials. You're only one click away from these hand-picked subscription tying boxes that are packed with value at almost half the cost. And I recently made a order through Togan's and the experience was perfect. After a uh, recent trip uh, nipping for trout, I had to replace my tungsten beads and some jig hooks and a few other items. The products arrived in a couple of days from Togan's with a nice little card, a bonus value, and a welcome note from the Togan's family. Since 2005, Togan's has been over-delivering on price and customer service, so it's time to discover for yourself what the buzz is all about. Head over to wetflyswing.com slash Togan's and take a look at their diverse selection of products today. You can support this podcast by clicking over to take a look at Togan's online. That's wetflyswing.com slash T-O-G-E-N-S. Togan's. Okay, now back to the show. Sounds like you guys have a number of products. I mean, some stuff we haven't talked about as well today. Um, any other big uh, things that are kind of uh, hot items or something that's been selling, doing really well for you guys you want to highlight here? Well, there's a, a brand new product that we are just launching now. We just put put it out on our web store uh, in the last month, and I think it's coming out on Amazon. And then shortly thereafter, we'll be getting it out in the world called Fins. And this is different than bars. It's basically another format for a plant-based snack, um, again, with low sugar and delivers protein. And if you can think about little, they're like little crisps about, you know, an, an inch long by half inch wide. And uh, there's, they come in a gusseted pouch with, with uh, four servings, 130 calories, four grams of protein, I think three or four grams of sugar. So low sugar, a nice little protein snack. Um, that you would have while you were doing a podcast and interviewing somebody or out on the, out on the, out on the river. Um, but they're just delicious. And it's just another format for delivering the same kind of nutrition we do at the bars. Okay. So, so that's uh yeah, that's the thins. And then, and just take us back just briefly, cause you know, and this is maybe some obvious stuff, um, but I'm just curious, you know, so plant-based versus other types of bars or ways you could do it out there what is, and then also talk about um you know vegan like maybe d- describe what what makes it ve- what is vegan and then also how is plant-based different than, than what other bars how they might be doing it yeah so um when you think about um vegan it, you know plant-based no animal products uh in in the foods um there is there is a health benefit and there is also an environmental benefit. And many of the products that you see out there uh, are not um, completely plant-based. And so that could be a little bit harder on your body because your body doesn't know what to do with that. You know, when they say, I mean, this extreme example would be, you know, what does your body do with a steak, right? Um, but it also uh, applies to you know, any kind of animal products are going to be tougher on your system. The biggest one that you'll find in bars and and in a lot of foods will be um, dairy. So, so, you know, dairy, so basically anything coming from animals, a lot of people are lactose intolerant or at least have discomfort from dairy. Uh, Their body doesn't process it as well. So that's probably the biggest one. And you'll find uh, the way whey protein is a, you know, it's, it's, it's dense, so you can get a lot of protein in there, but you, it, it does have some negative health, health effects, which are easy to research and, and uh, learn about. So ours are really easy on your stomach. They're good for your body and easy on the environment. And then is the plant base is that as obvious as it sounds? I mean, you've got yours is plant-based. How, how would other bars, if they weren't plant-based or are most all, all bars plant-based? No, no, I think that uh, many, many are not, um, because a lot of them will have uh, dairy in some form. Like eggs or, or butter, like you said, or something like that. Yeah, or, 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 yeah, exactly. 
like a, a, you got the bar. Well, the other bars you, you see out there, like the Tonka bars, right? Have you seen those things that are kind of a, they take a whatever bison or something like that. It's more of a, I guess it's kind of like the Native American. Meat based or, right. Yeah, yeah. So that's totally different. You guys don't have any plans of getting into that that se- sector of the uh, the market, right? No, and we and we believe in in what we're doing from a plant based standpoint as well. I mean, you know, the, the growing growing plants compared to uh, animal products, we're using I don't know a seventh or a tenth the amount of water. That helps reduce green greenhouse gases. It's easier on your body. Um, it's super efficient for your body to process, and it's really a, a much healthier uh, ecosystem, right, for the planet and for, and for yourself. So that's that's and that's that's really you know that it really is our, our mission, which is to create delicious, convenient, healthy plant-based food products. And um, I think it, it used to be when you said vegan or plant-based, the first thing people would say is, "Well, that's got to taste like crap." <laughs> but, it, but the reality is we've always tried to blend it with great taste. And I think we've done a great job of that. And, and honestly, we would say, hey, if you have a choice of eating a bar or making a really healthy salad or meal at home, and, and Art used to say that, then, then have, the, have the meal at home. But we're in a busy world, and that sound, that's easier said than done. People don't have time to sit home and prepare foods to be maybe during the pandemic, they got back to that a little bit more because people were home. But the reality is the world got really, really busy. And our whole idea was we still want to eat really healthy. How do we do that while we're on the move? No, I, you're definitely, I mean, like I said, preaching to the choir here because I think, and that's cool thing about getting you on here to, to share it with others that, you know, are listeners of this show that don't, aren't aware or, or, you know, don't know the benefits because the health obviously and the environmental benefits are too, big things that resonates with a lot of people in the fly fishing space because we're all, you know, Patagonia, there's lots of great companies that are all about the environment and doing great things. And I think ProBar sounds like you guys fit right in line with, uh, with some of the, some of those great companies. Is that, is that how you see it? I mean, with that environmental ethic and the health? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's, um, it all, it all blends together for a better planet. You want healthy people and a healthy planet. And, and I actually have a number of friends that are fly that are, that, that fly fish. Um, I've gone a few times, um, but they they love bringing their their meal bar. There are a lot of guides that use them there because they're so light and efficient, easy to as you're you know spending time in the river to have them and uh, keep yourself sustained. Yeah, no, it's totally. I mean, there's tons of people. Fly fishermen that are hunters. I mean, I, I, I do a little bit of hunting as well. And I mean, for sure, I've always got a few bars in the pack, you know, I mean, because it's just, yeah, it makes sense. You know, that's it's like a safety thing. And it's a thing just to have if you need to fill fill the gap. But um, I'm curious, uh, you know, on the the more of the environmental ethic, does that um, for you, where does that come from? Did you have that before when you were into the, you know, you, you talked about originally we go back to the real estate development, which developer, which is a, a while back. But um have you always had this environmental ethic or did that thing develop along the way? No, you know, honestly, I got educated more uh, on that front by art when we started this whole thing. When he when he taught me about um, plant-based foods and would do the, the cooking for me to make it easy to experience, he talked a lot about that and that was his passion. The other side of it is coming from New Jersey and moving to Utah where I started to spend, you know, all my time was in the outdoors my appreciation for the outdoors and the planet uh, grew tremendously. So it was very in line. Everything kind of came together at the same time, you know, moving to this area and seeing it, starting to have plant-based foods, learning about the benefits, learning about the impact on the planet. That was all very new to me. And things that people are hearing now, he had been saying, you know, 20 years ago. And he was just passionate about it. I mean, sometimes I tell him, there's a kind of thin line between rabid and passionate, but whatever it is, it's working. So keep going with it. And uh, he was great that way. But it was, that's where I started to learn um, the difference. It really was not on my radar screen in any way, shape or form, as, as it wasn't for many people for a long time. I think it's more so now than it was 20 years ago. But really, at that point, uh, people just weren't uh, a large group of people were not thinking about that. Obviously, as a fly fisherman and caring about the streams and the environment there and what's coming from up, upstream, um, you got, you're highly sensitive to that. 
And Art, it sounds like he was, uh, I mean, obviously a pretty big influence. Anything else you want to highlight that you learned from him, you know, over the years or when you knew him and he was part of your, that you really take away, you know, daily from nowadays? You know, really just that, that, that to share that message is, is one thing that I think that I really learned from, because I, I didn't know anything about it till he came around and, and he had a passion for it and really being able to share that passion. And one way to do it is just give someone a really easy choice food wise that's healthy and good for the planet and good for them and to the extent that you do that that's a great way to start the conversation so for example if you came by and he said oh you have some bars there i'm like yeah would you like to try one and you're like this is great all of a sudden your ear is wide open to hearing more about it right so it's a great entree to the conversation that's right so for you it comes to when you're pitching this thing if you were you know your elevator pitch to a new person or customer it might be you kind of start with the taste then go to health and then environment or what what does that look like what what are your what are your bullets yeah i think i think you know taste is king and first of all sharing food is a always a positive thing to do right you think about people coming for for meals or coming to your house or you know sharing food so sharing food and giving somebody something to eat and then it tastes great all the, all of a sudden the whole dialogue is different than if you said, I want to give you something. It has so many great health benefits. And all that. That's just, they hear it's like an, it's like, it's like something you see on an infomercial. You know? It's just not really very inviting. I think people's ear turns off to that pretty quickly, but sharing, sharing something that tastes great and is really good for you piques people's interest. And now more than ever, the healthy part, matters to them where 20 years ago even that part didn't matter but they were willing to listen because it tasted good and then they could say oh and uh, they go to their friend and say hey try this and like this is delicious and they're like and guess what it's good for you and it's good for uh you know and then you throw in the extra icing on the cake which is then it's also good for the environment exactly and you know 20 years ago that was a tougher that, you know that, that was a distant third but i think now um generationally uh people's ears are more open to that and people are starting to understand the impact. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, we've talked about this before on this show. We've had a number of different companies and brands and fly fishing and other outdoor products. And yeah, the conservation piece still is not, um, you know, uh, definitely when we do a conservation episode, uh, you know, it'll get a lot less l- listens, right? Just because it's um, some of it's a negative message. And I think that, so that's the struggle. So I think you guys leading with, you know, the, that, and I think of my experience too, when I first tasted, you know, the pro bars, it was the taste. I was like, oh damn, this thing's great. Just like you said. And then after you get into it, you're like, oh, I think I might, might've got it from natural grocers the first time. And I was like, oh, okay, this is, uh, you know, obviously most stuff there is, is pretty good quality stuff. And, um, but yeah, it makes sense. So, so you guys are still, I mean, I guess I think, you know, as you look out to the future, um, you've got these new products coming. I mean, how do you start to think about the next product? Are, are do you guys, are you settled with what you have now? Or are you always kind of in R and D? Yeah, I think we're, we, um, you know, we started with bars, but we never really called ourselves a bar company in our own minds, but we tried to do that and do that well, which I think we have. And we certainly have a lot of additional people that could benefit from, from pro bars. But, but the vision has always been to be a healthy plant-based food products company, not a healthy plant-based bar company. And so to that end, the Finns product that we, the, the Chris is another format for providing healthy nutrition and great tasting nutrition. But we'll try and do that in other places as well as time goes on. But they're, you know, as a small company, they're big undertakings. And um, we've got a bunch of ideas and things that we can do, but we try and do what we're doing well and then move on to the next one. But the vision is to continue to, to grow and to do, do the best job in other areas that we would go to food-wise, whether it's um, you know, whether it was a drink or if it was a bar or if it's a, a, a different snacking product, but trying to make it in a format that's convenient for people. You know, like we said, people are busy. They like, they like to snack. Um, this used to be all about your three square meals a day that you hear about when you were a kid, but really uh, giving people schedules and your, your body's ability to, um, you know, you can only digest so much at a time to be able to eat 
not just at your you know three meals a day, not have such three big meals. I mean, it's not really the best thing at the end of the day to have this giant meal and then go to sleep. So eating a lot of your healthy calories throughout the course of the day, you have sustained energy. Um, it's actually a healthier way to eat and gives your body a chance to do what it can do to digest and process what you've eaten. So it's better to, it's kind of better to almost snack on good food throughout the day as opposed to just eating a bunch of huge meals. Yeah. Like if I, you know, if I go into the office somewhere and I'll have my smoothie in the morning, but I'll also bring um, fruit during the morning and then I'll probably have a, um, a meal bar or something. And then uh, lunch is not really a big deal. I'll have something, but, and I'll do the same thing in the afternoon. Because if you try to do it, if you need, if you eat enough fruits and vegetables uh, at one meal, you, you'd feel like a cow grazing in the field. I mean, you'd look at your plate and gosh, you can't eat that much when you think about the recommended amounts you're supposed to have. But if you do that during the course of the day, uh, it's quite easy to do that. What if you ate, I'm just curious, you know, nobody should probably be doing this, but, you know, if you ate your bar, you know, had your bar like breakfast, lunch, dinner, um, you know, and had your, I guess, 380, 400 calories, I mean, how long could you do that and feel okay? Do, do people, I mean, I guess you're on trips, you could be on like a hiking trip and, and do that. What, what's your take there? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, it's nice to have a great variety of of healthy foods and minimally processed foods and pro bars are that so that you can go pretty far uh, with the meal bars. Um, you might just get tired of eating bars the whole time. But um, there have been a lot of incidents where people have eaten a lot of bars every day. I mean, I've had, like I said, at least two a day, just I, I tend to need a lot of calories. What's the story there, Jeff? What's the story there? Have you heard anything where people are like took it overboard and said, oh my God, this guy has eaten a hundred bars in like a week or something like that? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm probably more like, uh, let's see. Yeah I'm, like, yeah. I'm probably more like 15 to 20, 20 a week, but you know, you're not quite there, but you've probably heard some stories over the years, like people like your ambassadors or people that have eaten yes. a lot. What have any, anything come to mind? No, nothing like, you know, nothing where, where, uh, it's, it's crazy, but I have had some extreme stories with pro bar. I mean, we have, <clears throat> I talk about, uh, little kids. I talk about, uh, someone who's hunting, uh, or fishing. Um, but there were, we've had, uh, a couple good stories. So we got called at one point by the Tinkoff Saxo Tour de France team, uh, about five years ago. And they said, Hey, we'd love you to sponsor us to you to sponsor us. And we're like, we don't have a million dollars to give you for sponsorship. <laughs> we're a little company in Utah to like, but our riders love your stuff. So we did do a little sponsors. We can give you bars. And they're like, okay, that's good. <clears throat> and then I said, well, just for kicks, can you give me an idea of what you use the pro bars for? And they said, well, take Peter Sagan. He was there. He's a famous rider uh, who was their, their lead uh, in the Tour de France in 2016. And when, when, would, when would he eat our products? And they said, well, look, <clears throat> here's our day. In the morning, we wake up. We have a, a big breakfast. We need a lot of calories. I and mean, can you imagine a day? riding in the Tour de France, right? Those guys, it's not like they're getting breaks. They're just pounding it out. So we have a big breakfast. And then the first two hours of riding, uh, the riders on the team will eat one meal bar because they're just cruising along. Uh, and then the second hour, they're just cruising along. So they'll, they'll eat another meal bar. So there's like 800 calories in, <laughs> you know, 400 an hour. And, and they're cruising along, which makes me laugh. It's probably 30 miles an hour, you know, <laughs> he's dying. So it always makes me laugh. And they said, so that's how we use the meal bars. And then in the last hour uh, of the ride, you know, the wheels are coming off. I mean, you're, everybody is so fried. You're just hanging on by a thread. And that's where we use Bolt. And it's easy on our stomach. It is immediate energy and works just great. So <clears throat> it was great for them. As we talked about, you know, great for kids going to a bite bar for, or Bolt for kids going to a soccer uh, team. But then I met a guy. Uh, at the Banff Film Festival years ago, who had been on an Everest expedition. It was a, a very um, interesting story. It was there was a movie at the film festival about this expedition of a bunch of different teams from different countries trying to get to the top of Everest. Each team had lost some people who just got sick or couldn't had altitude sickness, couldn't make it to the top. So about a few different countries got together and decided to go up to the top. And it was a fateful story because there was never one person who was the leader. The leader would be someone who would say, hey, we have to turn back. It's, we didn't get to the summit on time or whatever. And they all went up. And about half that party uh, 
tragically died in that in that uh, expedition. It was, it was terrible. It was some movie. So after the movie, I was standing outside by the booth speaking to someone. I said, that is some story. I mean, it's just a devastating story. And it was uh, a very, uh, very, very nice guy. And he goes, oh, I see you're from Pro Bar. And I said, yeah. I said, did you see that movie? He goes, well, I was actually in that movie. And I said, well, who are you? He said, well, I was the medical doctor that went up with that crew to the top. And uh, we talked a, a bunch about that. But one thing he said is, you know, those, the pro bars just absolutely saved me. And it was really interesting because at those altitudes, when you're above 20,000 feet, your body just will not digest anything. But for whatever reason, primarily because it's all real food ingredients, my body would digest all of that. It was like the only way I could get nutrition and get energy from my body. I said, oh, that's amazing. He goes, he goes you know, in, in all fairness, a couple of the nuts didn't digest and they came out. I'm like, that's probably more information than I need, but I'm really glad, glad to hear it. Really nice, uh, interesting guy. But, um, but there's been just an extreme, I and mean, we so many cases of, you know, long distance trail runners and um, bikers. Uh, cause, and and there, it's not just that it's only for athletes, but it's just athletes know what they need and when something's working and when, when it doesn't. No, I agree. And I think of the, yeah, I always think, like you said, the bolts, you know, for athletes, but yeah, it sounds like they, they would eat a lot of everything. I mean, on that bolt, you said, was that 150 calories or what was a package of those? One nine, it's like 190, about 190 calories for a whole package, but that's, that's going to be 10 or 12 um, pieces, which you would kind of meter out over a period of time usually. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I eat those things, and I, I'd be like, man, I could eat those things all day. You know, they're tasty. It's kind of like eating, eating candy, right? I mean, it is, essentially. But there's no sugar. Or there's no added sugar in any of this stuff? Well, no. Well, those are going to be more sugar-based because it's very quick. Um, and that's not something that, that – that's going to be a very specific use. We'll give you very quick energy. Um, and, you know, if you're starting to bonk uh, and you're like, hey, I'm going to be – out fishing for a little bit. I still, I still got to walk back to the, to the car to get out of here. And you're like, I'm kind of coming apart a little bit, really a nice way to get something in quickly. Um, and they're actually great when you're on the move. So, uh, for, for runners or people where it's harder to digest chewing a bar, say while you're, while you're running, a bolt is a great way to do that. You know, and a lot of people do it with, um, they get electric and they also have electrolytes, which you can also get through your drinks. But it's a nice format for getting a couple calories in when you're really in need. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, no, and that's that's great. So basically, when you need it, keep those in for a, a, a you know rainy day or whatever when things get hard. Uh, and you mentioned some other products. I'm just curious as we start to wrap this up here. Uh, you know, the drinks, that would be interesting, right? Some sort of, a, I don't know what it would be. Um, but what about also you see these uh, these food, um, I guess, the, like these freeze-dried meals, right, that are kind of like um, Mountain House and some of these things where you add, you know, hot water and you have a meal. Is that something you guys have ever thought about doing? Because, I mean, those things, that's always been a struggle of getting those to taste good as well. Is, have you ever, you know, is that something that might fit the plant-based meal format? You know, we haven't, we haven't looked at that. Um, it is an interesting idea. What I would say is if you think about the amount of people that are using those versus kind of more broader based products, there's probably things that we could get to that would be more everyday products. Although coming up for, with a solution for that would be, would be noteworthy. That makes a good point because, yeah, it's basically camping. I mean, they're for camping, backpacking. It's not uh, Tour de France. Uh, bikers probably won't be eating one of those for their, their first meal in the day, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, but if you're not careful, they might eat your hand off because they, they need more calories. So uh, you got to be careful getting around those guys. Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right, Jeff. Well, I think uh, we're about there. Uh, maybe just maybe you gave us a heads up in the next you know year. You guys want to give a shout out again to what what you might have coming new or anything with you personally? Any big hikes or any uh, adventures? Are you still trail running? Uh, yeah, I am. Fortunately, uh, you know, I'm, when I started this, I was. Uh, closer to 40 now i'm closer to 60 and not on the and not on the under 60 side and i just turned 60 uh, a year ago but i'm still really fortunate that uh i am i am trail running uh quite a bit out here and, and just loving it it's been a real saving grace during the pandemic to be on the trails and get grounded i mean similar to when you go out and fly fish i'm sure it was 
really helpful during the pandemic really highlights how critical it is to be grounded out there. And uh, so I've been doing quite a bit of that and uh, getting on the trails. Park City is a great place for that. But we've also camped <clears throat> quite a bit in uh, in Utah in this last year and a half, more than ever before. And there's just some fabulous uh, outdoor places. So continuing to to run and, and a little bit of mountain biking out there. Yeah, I'm going to be stopping by there. And uh, well, I guess not. I'll be in Salt Lake here at the end of October. So I'll probably uh, have to well, give a ring when you're out there. When you're yeah, out this way, yeah, definitely. Maybe you can hit me in on a on a, a run or something out there. I can take a, a afternoon. And uh, what, what do you do for your? I'm curious with your trail running. Uh, do you have do you have like a pack, or you more just grab a water bottle and go for it? Um, you know, I I, um, I have uh, I, I do I do both. I mean, I've got some of the, the handheld handheld uh, bottles. But if it's longer than if it's longer than an hour, then I'll usually. Um, use uh you know either an ultra spire or um a solomon pack where i can put i can i can keep food and uh, and enough you know get a reservoir and start moving up to a 50 to 100 100 ounce reservoir because keeping the nutrition and the and the fluids in is critical yeah i agree i agree i love i love having the trail the backpack the tight uh pack <laughs> so all right, Jeff, well, uh, I'll send everybody out to uh, theprobar.com the if they have questions. And, uh, yeah, I mean, anything else you want to give before we let you get out of here? No, I mean, I would just uh, I, I would just try and to the extent that you can just emphasize just as another another mouthpiece to a big crowd of, of interested listeners to, to eat healthy and eat plant based and really wa- and make sure your nutrition works for you. It'll enhance every experience that you have outdoors uh, as well as, as, as indoors. But really for people who are outdoor enthusiasts, your day can be very different if you're, uh, if you're well fed and you give your body the energy it wants. That's a great takeaway for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. All right, Jeff, well, I'll let you get out of here. And uh, thanks again for taking the time and everything you guys have done at Pro Bar. You know, 20 years, almost 20 years of uh, producing great stuff. I can't remember how long I've been eating your bars, but I mean, I've, I've guessed it's been at least 10 years. So I'm going to I'm gonna double down on it this year and keep uh, spreading the word out for those that, uh, you know, listen to the podcast. And yeah, man, I hope to, hope to catch you up and uh, catch up with you in Utah. Yeah, let us know your favorites and uh, ship off an address to me and we'll We'll get a bunch of Pro Bar products, including the new the new stuff to you to try. Okay. Thanks again, Jeff. We'll talk to you soon. All right. See ya. Thank you. Bye. So there you go. If you want to find all the show notes, all links, everything else we covered today, head over to wetflyswing.com slash 256. 256. Please share this episode with one other person today who could use some amazingly nutritious food, some good stuff on the go. Uh, Jeff made a good point in this one. If you, instead of eating fast food, I think we all know uh, where you're going with it, with that. Um, just keep a couple of pro bars in there and you can use the coupon code flyfish25 at checkout for 25% off. That's flyfish25 at checkout. A little bonus there if you want to get started. And I definitely obviously have eaten uh, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of pro bars. So I, I love these things. Uh, also, before we get out of here, if uh, you can check in at wetflyswing.com slash fly shop and you can uh, support our local fly shop. I want to give you a quick heads up and stay tuned. Coming up this Tuesday, uh, Chris from the Caddis Fly Shop uh, is here to break down some, uh, some on the uh, October Caddis and a little fall fishing. So we're getting ready for fall. We're, we're getting ready to fire this up if you've been out yet this year. Um, it's time to do it. Some good stuff uh, Chris shares on Tuesday. Click that subscribe button. You'll get updated when that one goes live. That is all I have for you. That's a wrap for today. I want to thank you for uh, spending time today to listen to the show. And for if you get a chance to share it with somebody else out there, I would want to thank you in advance for that as well. Appreciate all of that and hope to catch with you maybe very soon online or maybe very soon on the water. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.